Dear learners, I am Christina Giorgi and I welcome you to my session on the course code MEG1 titled British Poetry. In this session, we will look at some of the most important topics from the course code MEG1. For that matter, we will go blog by blog and analyze the most important units in each of these blogs. Apart from that, we will also have a look at the previous question papers from each and every blog of MEG1 official study material. Dear learners, this session would undoubtedly help you prepare effectively for your TEE with respect to this particular course code MEG1. So before proceeding to this block wise analysis, let me remind you the question pattern for MEG1. We have already discussed, nevertheless, it is equally important to have clarity regarding the question type and question pattern that are seen in MEG1 question papers. So first and foremost, this is a 100 marks paper, hence you will have 3 hours time. Never panic because of time concerns. I can assure you that you will finish your paper within 3 hours unless you waste your time unwantedly. Tension would never help you score well. Hence, try your level best to remain cool. For that matter, you need preparation. If you have a look at the previous question papers of MEG1, you will understand that there are 8 questions in total. And remember, the first question is compulsory. But then again, you don't need to worry, you will get options within that. That is, within the first question, you will get sub-questions out of which you will just have to write 2 out of 4. That is, within question 1 itself, there will be 4 sub-questions out of which you can leave 2 questions and attempt the other 2, any 2, as per your comfort, your convenience. But remember, question 1 would deal with annotations that is four lines will be given from any poem mentioned in your study material for that matter you will have to have detailed idea regarding the poems that you are studying appendixes will certainly help you because as part of our study material i'm referring to our official study material we have this appendix section at the end of each and every block where the detailed text of each and every poem mentioned in the study material are provided so you may refer to that and also in between the chapters there are certain lines extracts from the poems you may have to read those as well so that's regarding the first question very often students find this section quite challenging it's basically because they don't read the poems as such unless you know at least from which poem this lines are taken you will not be able to answer this question effectively for that matter you will have to have deep understanding of each and every unit each and every poet each and every work mentioned in your study material for that matter this session will help you regardless of that you will have to write any four other question remember the first question comprises of individual questions 10 marks each 10 for each of the two questions, 10 into 2, 20 marks. All the other questions carry 20 marks each. Hence, for this paper, you will have all essay questions except for the first question which is compulsory. It is just for 10 marks. Regarding the essay questions, you will have to choose any 4 out of the total of 7 questions. That is from 2 to 8 you will have to choose any 4. Remember the 8th question would typically be to write a critical appreciation of any of the poem and there also you will have options. You will have 4 options out of which you will have to write the critical appreciation of any one of the poem. How many marks? 20 marks. So very often students make mistakes with respect to critical appreciation that is not everyone is quite aware of how to write a critical appreciation of a poem so this is very crucial for that matter you need to practice and plan effectively you need to be aware of all the 
literary techniques with respect to poetry as well with a bit of smart work and a minimal level of preparation you will be able to crack the te for meg1 so regarding the page limit i have been receiving a lot of questions that is most of the students are worried about how many pages they should write so let me remind you that it is not the page numbers that matter it is the content that matter nevertheless you should be sensible enough to write the relevant points within the appropriate word limit there is no word limit specified in your question paper hence you are free to write but write the key words and the key points it is important to answer the question but for an essay question you will have to have an introduction relevant details the main answer and finally conclusion when i discuss the blocks i let you know how to answer questions for an essay so 20 marks essay you would be quite familiar that is for 20 marks very often you can write up to 5 pages that is with respect to this particular paper i hope you are aware of the fact that you will be provided booklet a single booklet for a single student that is this booklet as far as i know would include 26 page 27th page is for rough work and the 28th page basically deals with the instructions so you have 26 pages to write never ever worry about the limitation in the number of pages it wouldn't affect you trust me you wouldn't write that much unless you just leave blank pages or you just strike off answers for that matter plan your answers effectively so as i was saying for an essay question you just have to write five essays provided the first question both the questions together would run into the page limit of an essay so 5 into 5 25 five pages each write five essays for five pages each regarding the short essay 10 plus 10 to and a half to and a half five so it's up to you it's just a suggestion from my part you could do as you like but i really it would be great so that's all regarding the structure and the question pattern always remember to refer to the previous question paper if in case you are lucky you will see repeated questions and that would certainly benefit you by multifaceted ways and means so now let's move on to the block wise analysis of the most important units i'll also help you with the previous questions based on these units So now let's focus our attention towards the very first block of MEG1. Remember you must have four or five books depending on your year of enrollment for this particular course code. So you should be aware that there are many books that is 10 blocks in total for your study. According to your convenience you can start your preparation for your tee so within the first block you have seven different units so on a close reading we can understand that some units are more important than the other units with respect to your tee preparation so i would advise you to have a reading on unit 1 nevertheless there wouldn't be a specific one for your tee so you can spare that unit for your tee preparation moving on to unit 2 a prelude to the study of poetry we have already discussed this but there wouldn't be a direct question regarding the study of poetry for your te very probably but you should never leave this unit for this is quite mandatory for you to write the critical appreciation question number 8 you'll have to have detailed knowledge on the various literary devices stylistic features and much more in order to make your answer look effective and to score well so for that matter that unit 2 is quite important regarding unit 3 you can read about the age of chaucer there wouldn't be a specific question most probably but unit 4 is important you need to study this unit in detail for if they ask you any question regarding chaucer you'll have to understand or you'll have to write an introduction to chaucer right for that matter unit 4 would certainly help you and unit 5 
the general prologue to the canterbury tales i would say is the most important unit in this particular blog the reason is because most probably you will receive a question regarding the portraits if at all you receive such a question you will have to extend your answer with an introduction and a suitable conclusion how would you do so you will start with chosa you will start with the age of chosa including the life the work the background etc and then you will move on to canterbury tales and an introduction to canterbury tales and thereafter you will move on to the prologue to the canterbury tales where you will mention all the portraits as per the question at times they'll ask you specific portraits at times they'll ask you a general question according to the question frame your answers it should be lengthy those answer paragraph should be very lengthy i mean the core paragraph should be very lengthy and then end with a suitable conclusion remember that your answer should didn't exceed 5 pages because that is a tip that i would like to tell you that is when you're attempting essay questions for the same marks it would be ideal if you could maintain equal lengths suppose you wrote the first question for four pages the second question for eight pages and the third question for two pages would that be able to impress the examiner by any chance of course not so it is important to plan your answers in advance so that matter let me remind you that this unit is of great importance similarly unit 6 and 7 deal with the nuns priest tale and that is also an important area i've seen many questions from this particular uh, area there are essay questions possible essay questions you might also receive perhaps an annotation question from these two blocks hence from block 1 i would say units 4 to 7 are very important the most important would be unit 5 let me remind you to have a look at the appendices that is from page numbers 127 to 188 you'll have to have better clarity regarding the lines never forget to read the text by text i'm referring to the original text provided in the appendices all right that will help you write those passages those annotation questions with ease and confidence that's all regarding the very first block now i invite your attention towards some of those questions from these units asked for some of the previous tees so there was this question for the december 2021 tee that is to attempt an analysis of the portraits of the prioress the monk the friar and the wife of bath so if you receive such a question for your tee how would you answer of course it's an essay type question it should be an essay suppose for 5 pages how do you write firstly plan plan before you write see with a bit of smart work you can actually prepare your answers in advance write at your home you can start preparing and if you are prepared you just have to adjust your answers according to the question and that would be very smart of you and that would help you score better it's possible for for this particular paper it's certainly possible so regarding this particular question remember to mention all the specified portraits for so you'll start with an introduction to chaucer his life work background other works specific focus to canterbury tales about this particular work and the prologue to the canterbury tales and mention the names of all the portraits and give specific importance to those four portraits mentioned critically analyze and conclude with appropriate remarks remember you are students of masters in english language and literature so you are expected to write from a critical perspective just writing summary would not work for the ma learners if you look at your questions both the questions and the question pattern these are very tricky if you read it up close you'll feel like they expect you to 
add your own inputs and that's a factor that differentiates your answer from those answers from your classmates so prepare yourself for that another question asked for june 2021 tee was to name the three main sources of chaucer's vocabulary there is also part 2 how does each source contribute to his poetry so for that question you will have to write about chaucer's language and versification so if you try to locate this section in your study material this would be section 4.7 but now i would like to raise this question would you just limit your answer to just those two paragraphs or three paragraphs mentioned in that section of course not that would be a blunder that is this would be your core answer but before that you need to provide a suitable introduction there should be a seamless transition between the paragraphs and that would make a perfect answer you should mention all those elements actually mentioned in that unit which unit unit 4 of block 1 there was another question asked in another year in the month of june for a tee it was asked to critically comment on the nuns priests tale that would be a very easy question if you are prepared you can certainly do that how would you answer that question you'll start right from chaucer the same first two paragraphs and then you'll move on to this nuns priests tale you'll expand that and then critically appreciate that and according to the question you'll answer and find a suitable conclusion it would be great if you could find a conclusion that is quite suited to the question that is if there is a descriptive question you can lift words and phrases from that question and add into your conclusion and that would be wonderful let me remind you that these are not prescriptive it's actually your choice you are free to write in a manner that would suit you but It's my responsibility to give suggestions and these are just my suggestions it's your choice whether to follow these suggestions or not to follow these suggestions anyway i wish you good luck on that note let's proceed further moving on to the next block which is block number 2 titled undertaking a study of spencer so as the very title suggests this entire block is regarding spencer hence it is of great importance to have a detailed understanding on the life and works of spencer that is unit 9 before that very often students leave out this unit unit 8 titled the renaissance the reason is because it provides you the historical background but let me remind you that i have seen questions from this particular unit so i would suggest you not to leave out this particular unit unit 8 the renaissance when we discuss the previous questions we will focus on to those questions asked from this particular section moving back to edmund spencer unit 9 it is of great importance to know the life and works of spencer especially regarding the biographical criticism mentioned here his early life cambridge years all those would help you frame your answers effectively especially with respect to the essay questions so from where would the essays come there is a probability of them asking you regarding the amorites sonnets that is unit 10 title spencer's poetry this is important for it provides you detailed analysis of the amorites sonnets amorites sonnets sonnets number 34 67 and 77 but the most important unit from this block would undoubtedly be unit 11 why is that so it's because it provides us the detailed analysis of the epithalamian and the prothalamian dear learners trust me when i say this you would very probably receive at least one essay question from this block and most probably it would be some way or the other related to the epithalamian or prothalamian it could be a general question on spencer even so you will have to mention these two or else it could be a specific question on these wedding songs so that's all regarding this block in brief 
do not forget to refer to the appendices there the texts of the sonnets and the wedding songs are provided you need to have an idea regarding these so as to answer those annotation questions i've seen annotation questions from the wedding songs and the sonnets too all right now let's focus our attention towards some of the previous questions from block 2 In the year 2020 for the June TEE they have asked this question identify the most influential factors that shaped Spencer's career as a poet so you will have to answer from the second unit of this block regarding the life and works of Spencer but remember there is a second part to the question and there lies the challenge to illustrate with examples from the poems you have read dear ones this is the most crucial part you will have to illustrate you will have to substantiate your answers you will have to give examples from the poems that you have studied for that matter you need to have clear cut idea regarding what all poems you have studied which all poets have you studied and to which block does this particular poet belong to for that matter you need to know the chronology the age wise classification so all these needs not just revision but also re-revision if you are in the habit of not making you can also make notes but the challenge is to study even after preparing notes i have witnessed many cases where students prepare notes but they wouldn't have time to actually read through or study these notes so smart work is equally important of course there should be hard work without work without hard work there wouldn't be success at all right so moving on to the second question that i've noted what does the renaissance mean identify the key factors responsible for the spread of renaissance in europe so this was asked for the december 2019 tee Remember this is from the first block of this sorry i repeat this is from the first unit of block 2 it's a question from the background it's regarding the renaissance so you will have to have an idea regarding the backdrop too moving on there was this question asked for the december 2016 tee that is to analyze time and temporality in the epithalamin and prothalamin dear ones listen this question specifies time and temporality in the wedding songs by spencer so how would you frame your answer very often for such a question students would start the very first paragraph from time and temporality to spencer and both these wedding songs is that the correct way of doing it or let me rephrase my question would you be able to write for around 5 pages if you start that way of course not how do you write a perfect answer for this particular question the perfect answer would be to start from yes indeed from spencer the life and works of spencer and then you mention epithalamin in detail prothalamin in detail i'm not mentioning the summary but the basic context of these two poems before that you can even mention the aspects of time and temporality or even after these you can mention as a paragraph time and temporality and you can analyze these two aspects in these two poems and then you can conclude with a suitable conclusion so it is always possible to create a set answer and according to the question you can adapt to that answer for example the introductory paragraphs can be already set when you are at home you can preset you can actually have your own customized answer but with respect to the question you can adapt to your answer all right so that would do that's all regarding some of the basic previous degree questions from block 2 shall we move on to block 3 block 3 is titled the metaphysical poets dun herbert and marvel so here also we have around 5 units the very first unit is regarding pre restoration 
you can just read and understand the background but never ever skip units 13 and 14 for these two are important units i've seen many questions from john dunn i can assure you that even you'll receive a question from john dunn but rem- let me remind you that there would certainly be a probable question from metaphysical school of poetry even a general question regarding metaphysics metaphysical poets would be possible regarding george herbert i wouldn't say it's very important for i haven't seen many essay questions there could be annotation questions maybe but unit 16 andrew marvel you need to study you should not skip andrew marvel especially to of his poems to his coy mistress the garden these two are very important so pay attention to andrew marvel nevertheless the most important person in this unit the most important poet let me be specific poet have seen many students making mistakes by referring to a poet as a writer or author this author this writer likewise but let me remind you that this paper mg1 is specifically devoted to poetry and its study so never ever mention a poet as a writer you can always mention a poet is a poet just keep that in mind it's okay to make mistakes but i just suggested so that you wouldn't make mistake next time you write your tee so regarding john dunn's poem the flea the twickenham garden i've seen critical appreciation questions for these there could be annotation questions for all these the canonization is important there could be annotation question there could be a general question regarding done if at all they ask you a general question you need to specifically mention all these poems so remember all these poems even if they don't ask you to illustrate you should have the sense to illustrate because that will fetch you more marks so be smart study well now let's quickly have a look at some of the previous question paper there was this question for the june 2022 tee what do you understand by the term metaphysical poetry elaborate the characteristics so this is a very basic question a general question from log 3 you will have to explain what the metaphysical school of poetry is you will have to analyze its characteristics whenever you analyze a poetic school with characteristics you will have to provide suitable examples the specific poets and their most renowned works with respect to poetry those would be poems or poetry collections so this is a tricky question nevertheless never fail to mention john dunn george herbert andrew marvel among other metaphysicals remember if you are mentioning a poet it is the second name that should compulsorily be mentioned never write andrew or george there could be many george and andrews so it is the second name even if you write just herbert and marvel it's fine either you write the full name or just the second name similar is the case with the title whenever you are writing the title of a poem write the full title if there is a subtitle do not forget to write the subtitle capitalize the content words i hope you remember the way we studied how to write a title all right moving on to the next question write a detailed note on john dunn's poetic medium this was asked for the 2020 june tee so this is a specific question on john dunn unit 13 provides you his thematic and technical innovations with textual study on four love poems by john dunn there you can find the detailed answer this would be a bit challenging question for you unless you are thorough with the works of john dunn for this question you shouldn't just start with dunn but with the metaphysical school of poetry similarly there was this question asked for the june 2010 te it's a 
um, quite an old question the pattern must have changed but questions you can still refer what are the main features of metaphysical poetry give examples from poems see give examples from poems in our course so it's more or less a repetition we so such kind of question after a decade for the 2020 te also such a question was asked right yeah then um, there was this another question what are the main features of metaphysical poetry give illustrations based on the poems in your study material so this question keeps on repeating another question was regarding the metaphysical poetry with specific focus on the works on done herbert and marvel it's asked for the june 18 2018 tee i told you andrew marvel is important hence unit 16 you shouldn't spare based on unit 16 there were a few questions for example for the december 2017 tee there was this question as a question to evaluate the garden and for many tees i have seen this uh, question 8 critical appreciation for the garden and other poems by um, our marvel even to his coy mistress often comes for notation or as part of uh, the te somewhere or the other there was this question to discuss andrew marvel either as a political poet or as a writer of philosophical and love poetry this was asked in the year 2017 for the june tee there was another question to consider the garden by marvel as the didactic poem in the year 2015 for the june tee so in certain questions the poet is mentioned but in some other questions the poets are not mentioned so you will have to have this understanding a correlation between the poets and their specific works regarding their particular ages regarding the blocks in which we study them that is quite mandatory as i mentioned earlier you can make notes doesn't mean you'll have to make notes on the entire block at least you can outline the basic units unit title whoever comes under each units i'm referring to the poets and which are their works if you number and jot it down maybe it will be much more easier for you to understand all right and when you write your answers do not put bullet points write in paragraphs divide the paragraphs at times some easy minor things could make a great difference that is write in a much legible handwriting if your handwriting is beautiful you will naturally score marks if you have the relevant content if you don't write with the legible handwriting even if you have written actually correct answers it would be very difficult from the part of the evaluator to actually read and understand what you have written similarly if you write in bold fonts or if you write in overt sizes it would certainly be negative that is some people are of the impression that the more they write the more merrier actually no it is the content that matters and uh, unnecessary stuff shouldn't be written that is only those relevant aspects should be written as and moving on to the next block that is block number 4 titled studying milton here also we have five units to study that is units 17 to 21 so as the very block title suggests this particular block deals with the various aspects connected to the life and works of milton for that matter unit 17 gives you an overview of the historical aspects with respect to the late renaissance from your examination point of view you don't have to study this unit in detail it will just give you an overview of the background 
maybe you can read and understand but for your examination units 19 to 21 are of great importance even unit number 18 deals with milton and his life all those aspects you need to remember at least the basic details so that you can enrich your essay answers effectively as part of unit 18 there is this specific section on an appraisal of milton's poetic career make sure that you read and frame your own points out of this particular section for it's important for your tee when it comes to unit 19 This section provides a survey of Milton's lesser poems and prose. There you'll have to have an idea regarding the poems mentioned. There will not be an essay question based on any individual poem. Nevertheless, you could expect these poems maybe for annotation or even critical appreciation, but I haven't seen most of them so far. for that matter this section would be important if there comes a general question on milton a general essay for that matter you'll have to know which are the early works and regarding his prose works in general along with his poetic outputs now let's focus our attention towards one of the most important units from this particular block that is unit number 20 where we see two important poems by milton on the morning of christ's nativity and also lycidas unit 21 is also important because it deals with the companion poems l'allegro and il penseroso in short units 20 and 21 never ever leave these two units with respect to your te preparation dear learners you can certainly expect essay questions from milton it could be on nativity ode or elegy or even the companion poems so please be prepared remember the nativity ode in order to explain this question you need to mention what an ode is similarly for an elegy you need to explain what an elegy is with examples with respect to your essay answer now let's have a look at some of the previous questions from this particular block in a recent tee yes june 2022 tee which of these two poems l'allegro and il penseroso in your opinion represents milton's own views more accurately so this was this question see you can have your own input but relevant input and this was a question based on the last unit even l'allegro in pelsero so there could be essay question so i would advise you rather i would suggest you to study those shall we move on to the fifth block there we see dryden and pope alexander pope regarding dryden i would ask you to study macfleck no no matter what there would probably be one question on macfleck no if not the question will be based on an epistle to dr arbuthnot so you should be very specific that you study these two works all right regarding the unit wide discussion it's okay not to be well aware regarding the age of dryden for the te perspective nevertheless you will have to study unit 23 so as to help you with a general outline maybe a general essay if at all most probably the question will be on math flick no nevertheless be prepared and even for alexander's feast or the power of music there could be a notation questions you never know so please be prepared all right study pope alexander pope the study of an epistle to dr arput not would certainly help you most probably so remember these two are neoclassical poets so whenever you write an essay on these two you start with neoclassicism neoclassic poetry its features the key figures and the key works and then gradually move on to 
the verb mentioned according to the question this is how you frame your perfect answer for your tee let me help you with one latest question regarding macflecno for the december 2021 tee there was this question can macflecno be called a comic fantasy yes likewise there has been questions on dr arbuthnot most probably essay questions so be prepared now moving on to the next block which is block number 6 So what does block number 6 deal with Of course it deals with yes a topic that most of you must be familiar to you will be enjoying this section most probably yes it deals with the romantic poetry so before moving on this section let me remind you you should be aware of the old generation of romantic poets and the new generation of romantic poets this block is titled the romantic poets blake wordsworth and coleridge so introduction to romantic poetry you may read that when you study blake itself there is a section where they introduce you to the features of romanticism i've seen questions from blake there has been a lot of annotation questions even one or two critical appreciation i've seen and in general also they could ask you this the tiger the lamb the companion poems and many more all right but the most important section from this particular block would undoubtedly be the prelude it's a poem written by wordsworth so i've seen this many times so please be prepared all right then unit 30 is also important for it deals with two notable poems by coleridge namely kubla khan and dejection and ode it's an ode so mention that and its features kubla khan must be very familiar for all the um, ba level learners if you have a student of ba english you would have certainly studied the kubla khan so i'll share an interesting incident that happened with a group of students have taught they were of the impression that ah it's kubla khan who doesn't know kubla khan so they were of the impression that this question wouldn't be there for the tee but to all our surprise for that particular tee the very first question that annotation question was regarding kubla khan sadly most of them couldn't even attempt that question because they knew this for many years but because of this reason they didn't revise that and hence they were not confident enough to write that answer so never ever underestimate any piece of work in your syllabus or in your study material even if that's a repetition you could still have that maybe the question setters must have helped the students but they couldn't enjoy that privilege so may that not happen to your batch so yes let's be prepared so remember to read the appendices also regarding the previous question many a times i've seen this question on the features of romantic poetry a general question it has been asked if you attempt such a question you shouldn't just restrict your answers to the features of romantic poetry you should first substantiate with with illustrations from your study material never ever forget to mention blake wordsworth coleridge and even the second generation whom we we'll look at in the next section i mean the next block so yes see another question was asked recently in june 2020 to explain the salient features of romanticism based on your understanding of romantic poetry see at times they ask you specifically at times they don't even if you don't find specific mention in the question paper if you attempt a general question please make sure that you elaborate on it be aware of what you write do not waste your paper unnecessarily or else you'll have trouble very often you wouldn't but do not take risk with that all right regarding the prelude for the december 2021 tee there was this question discuss the prelude as an autobiographical poem yes 
autobiographical element is very significant with respect to Wordsworth and his writing. You can also mention all the relevant aspects, even an introduction to poetry, romantic poetry, its features, the notable figures, the two generations, the most important work, specific attention to Wordsworth, his definition of poetry, I quote, poetry is the spontaneous overflow of powerful emotions recollected in tranquility, I unquote. You can add all these relevant aspects. stuff make sure that you make your answer interesting and make your answer stand out from the rest of your batch mates dear learners please to believe that nothing is impossible be confident i know you are all busy in your own fields of life and you are trying to pursue this degree nevertheless with a bit of effort from your part with a bit of dedication from your part with the support that i provide you i'm very sure that you'll be able to crack the te at the very first attempt even if not it's not at all something bad there is still chance for you and keep trying keep working hard and success will be yours for nothing is impossible on that note we would wind up this discussion for now due to the duration of time in the video i'll pause it here and i'll upload the rest of the session as part 2 of this discussion so in part 2 we'll deal with the remaining blocks that is blocks 6 to 10 i really hope the session was interesting and useful to you if so please do prepare well thank you so much for listening to me all the very best